today I'll show you how you can turn any image into a triptych, which are three perfectly aligned panels using Affinity Photo. Stick around to the end for my free online tool that splits and downloads your panels with a single click. Link for that will be in the description. A triptych is a three panel artwork. Historically, it's a type of a polyptych which are multi-panel pieces used as hinged altar pieces in medieval and renaissance art. Most of the time, the center panel will be the dominant one, and the side ones support the story. If you want a longer art history dive, check out the links I provided in the description. With modern arts or photos, the center panel is usually part of the composition and the storytelling. In today's video, we'll dive in Affinity Photo first, and see how we can split and export the image into three parts. I'll start with a new document and size really doesn't matter, but I'll use the HD preset. Let's also make sure that the document unit is in pixels. What we're going to do first is to determine our panel ratios. Let's go for the 20-60-20 ratio. I'll start with a rectangle and make sure it has no outline. The fill color is not important, so I'll just go with neutral gray. To set an exact width to the rectangle, we'll use the transform panel. If the transform panel is not shown in your environment, enable it from the window menu. Now set the width to 600 pixels. Next, I'll add the left rectangle and set its width to 200. Let's make sure it's aligned correctly and then duplicate this rectangle to use it on the right. We now have our panel set up, which we're going to utilize in a second, but first let's do a little bit of organization and give them names before grouping them. After grouping, I'll lower the opacity of the group. Perfect, our template is ready. Now let's open the image we want to split into three separate files using the template we created. I already have the image in my clipboard, so I'll use the new from clipboard menu. Now that we have our image loaded in a new document, let's quickly switch back to the document with our panel setup. I'll copy the group with the rectangles and switch back to the image and paste the group here. I can now resize the group to fit the image. As we are resizing the group, the ratio between the rectangles will stay the same. Before moving to the next step, we need to make sure that the rectangles are aligned correctly on pixel level. In order to see that, I'll change the color of the outer rectangles and really zoom in to the intersection between the rectangles until we can see the pixel grid. As you can see, it matched perfectly in this example. If that is not the case, make sure to enable the pixel work snapping options and then align the rectangles so that they are aligned perfectly on pixel level. Next step is to use the rectangles to split the image in separate files. Let's start by first ungrouping the group they are in. Now we can go to the export persona to create the slices for export. In the export persona, I'll switch to the layers and then create a slice from the center layer. This is going to be a temporary slice to help with the snapping for the left and the right slice I'm going to add. Now that we have our left and right slice, I can remove the temporary slice we created and manually add the center slice for the image and we are done setting up the slices. Before we do the export, let's make sure the default background slice is turned off for export and hide the rectangle overlays by disabling them from the layers tab. Perfect, we can now go back to the slices tab and press the export slices button to get our three image slices. This method works quite well and here is an alternative method. I'll get rid of the slices, enable back the rectangles and switch back to the main photo persona. We are going to use the rectangles as clipping masks for the image, but let's make sure that they are not transparent by selecting them and setting the opacity to 100%. I'll select the image and make two duplicates by pressing Command or Ctrl J. I can now drag and drop all the images into the rectangles. Each rectangle will now clip the image, as we can see when I turn them on and off. The advantage of this method is that when we go to the export persona, we don't need to manually create slices. We can just select the layers and then use the Create Slice button. Once we have our slices, we can export them again. The only disadvantage of this method is that when you make changes in the image, you need to make sure it is copied into each rectangle. Whereas in the first method, 
The slices are not linked to the rectangles and will use the visible canvas. This would, for example, make it very easy to change the image. Here's a quick tip. You can save the template group in your assets. So here I have three variants in my assets. I can just drag and drop it to the image, adjust the size, and follow the steps I showed a minute ago to export them. It can definitely save you a lot of time. Keep in mind that I haven't touched the picky details for print. The goal of this video is showing how you can split the image. If you want to use the separate images for print, you probably have to take bleed into consideration and have some overlap, and so on and so on. Even though you can split the images in Affinity Photo, it's not really ideal. For this purpose, I created a super handy tool you can use for free. The link will be in the description and it works locally on your browser and all the processing is done in your local browser, so nothing is sent to a server. Just load or drag and drop your image and adjust the sliders to your needs. You can change the number of panels, change the panel width, either by using the slider, entering values, or by dragging them in the preview. A nice option is also the ability to adjust the gap size to give an impression how the image would look like on the wall. Once you're done, press the Download All Panels button to initiate the download. Press OK to save all the files to your downloads. Pretty awesome. By the way, I forgot to mention, but your last settings are stored in your browser's local storage and will be remembered when you reload the page, allowing you to quickly reapply the same settings to different photos. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comments if the tool works for you or not. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and see you in the next video.